a little while ago, God told me to, to uh, do more preaching on the, on the office of the prophet, on the prophet's office. So this is going to go along that lines a little bit because I want you to see a little bit more of, of what's going on and how you're going to be able to profit through that office. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying the body of Christ. It looks to me that without these ministry gifts, it would be very difficult to be perfected. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. But you liken to all of them working together is a hand in the body of Christ, right? Okay, so we got the apostle would be likened unto the thumb. It's the biggest of the fingers. It's much bigger than any of the other fingers. Thicker, longer, stronger. But it's the only finger that goes from office to office. It can be a teacher or a pastor or an evangelist or a prophet. You understand? It can move around. It can do them all if it has to. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it functions really well with the other ones. Then you got the next one, which would be the prophet's office. Right? Right? The prophet is a very strong finger, but it's what you use to point with. You point with that finger. You say, come here. Or you say, go away with that finger. You point things out. If you're going to poke somebody in the chest, that's the finger you use. Your middle finger is the longest, means it reaches out the far. It's actually not any longer than the apostle, but it's out of the, uh, the other four. It's the longest, and that would be the evangelist. It reaches out to the world. It preaches the gospel of salvation to people. Gets people saved and healed, right? Then the pastors is actually one of the weakest gifts. It's not the weakest in the sense of in the body of Christ, a very strong gift. I'm not saying any of the things of God are weak. But when you, when you realize it kind of needs other things to work well. It needs the fingers around. Have you ever tried to just do something with that finger? It's like connected weirdly to the two next to it. You understand? The pastor. And then the teacher's the smallest, but it can get into all the nooks and crannies. It's, right? It's more delicate. If you need to get your finger into something, you're going to use that one. Now, why am, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because uh, back quite a while ago when I was at Rhema and I was under the ministry of, of, of Kenneth Hagin and Doc, I was going to Dr. Dufresne's church, I had a vision. And I was in this vision and we were... Uh, and it was profound. It still affects me today. And I'm going to share it with you. I can't say that I've short. I've never shared this publicly before. So get ready. So I'm there. I'm praying. Obviously, I was probably praying in the spirit. I spent a lot of time praying in the spirit down there. And as I'm probably kneeling by my couch, which is what I usually do, I'd get next to the couch and I'd kneel next to it and I'd pray in tongues for at least an hour, hours sometimes. Pray in tongues, pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. And as that, and then all of a sudden I'm in this vision, and here we were. And it looked to me like a, like one of those theaters that are kind of semicircular. And I was kind of up in the back, one of the back rows, kind of sort of up on a, the next tier of a balcony, sort of. It wasn't an actual balcony, but it was more like a stadium kind of. And I was up farther in the back. And Jesus was on the platform. You know, I've had people criticize me because I've seen Jesus so many times, but. And part of what the prophet's ministry does is they have visions, they have dreams, they have revelations, they have visitations from angels. It's just part of, it's part of the, the workings of their equipment. So here I am, I'm, so I'm up in there, and I'm seeing Jesus. He's down on the stage, and Kenneth Hagin is standing right next to him. And, Kenneth, and Jesus is giving direction to Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin would come up, he'd come up, and he'd call each person that was in the room one at a time to come up. We were, we were the people that were under... Dad Hagen's ministry, and if you know anything about authority, people that have been in the military understand authority fairly well. If the general wants to say something to you, does he just come and say something to you? No, he goes and he speaks through the chain of command, right? And the person over you is the one that says something to you, but it came from the general. So Jesus was sitting right there, right behind Dad Hagen. Dad Hagen came up, and he called somebody up, and, and he had this, this looked like a dowel thing. Could be a director's wand, but it looked like a towel. And the people would come up there, and he would either rebuke them or say something to them. People, I saw, I saw several of them come up here, and they'd have to put their hand there, and he would whack it and send it back to their seat. Now, I'm in this vision, and I'm praying and hoping that, number one, I don't get called. 
you know how you do that you're in a classroom and you're like don't call on me you sort of look away you put your hand down you try to be invisible well he called my name and so well, what are you gonna do <laughs> you go up so I go up to the front and there's dad Haggard looking at you he looks at me with this strange look and it's because I'm concerned that I'm gonna get spanked right I don't know what I did wrong but I'm sure it was something <laughs> and he looks at me with this this strange look and he takes that 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 dowel thing that he had in his hand and he snaps it in half looking at me I'm like what is this supposed to mean and then he grabbed my hand are you here he grabbed my hand and he took the pointed jagged edge of that that dowel I have that dowel and he began to dig it into my index finger until all the flesh was removed from it and then my vision ended thank God but I knew exactly what it meant I knew exactly what that meant I didn't like what it meant but I knew exactly what it meant knowing what it represented in the fivefold gifts and he was doing it. he was anointing people for different offices he came and he took the flesh off my finger so that I could be a prophet in the prophet's office do you understand that does that make sense it was at that moment that I was set into the office of the prophet and I wasn't set there under my own authority I didn't make it up I was set there by the Lord Jesus Christ through the proper proper authority of command through my dad spiritual dad Kenneth E Hagan and that's where I stand today now one of the reasons I say that is because those things need to be said for people to receive it now is the time to come forth with your gifts and I'm speaking to you now is the time not to sit down and wait now is the time to step up to the plate step up and be what I've called you to be step up and be and let the world see who you are not what you were who you are and it shall be says the Lord that great things shall come to pass because the Spirit shall move with you in that capacity he won't be waiting for the old you he's been waiting for the new you to arise and be strong in the Spirit Ooh. so what is being left in you today what is being put on you that will cause you to say I can go over I don't have to go under Holy Ghost of God.